of the most significant characteristics or actualizers of great leaders is their ability to bounce back from crucibles. What are crucibles? These are extremely harsh experiences that test people, pushing them to their limits and beyond. We all experience crucibles. It could be a loss of a loved one or a major professional setback. But what distinguishes great leaders is that they are able to withstand them. Even if they are knocked down, they bounce back up stronger than before. Israelis are no stranger to these extreme adversities. In the 1800s, there were waves of immigration from Russia, Yemen and elsewhere in the diaspora. They came to a largely barren and inhospitable land, lacking natural resources and infrastructure. My own grandparents, in fact, immigrated here in the 1930s. One of the main reasons behind the Israelis' ability to lead in innovation, to bring about progress, is their resilience in the face of crucibles like these. Russian, secular, religious, male, female, they've all contributed in major ways to the benefit of the society. From teachers to prime ministers, like Golda Meir, people who came here and transformed this country. And look what happened. People that came from countries but that had absolutely nothing to do with agriculture. They never put a seed in, in the soil, they never planted a tree. And uh, they're feeding Europe. I know I live in this fantasy. If I had stayed in Sydney, Australia, who would I have been and what would I have been? But Israel is innovative because you don't have people just living here and saying, well, I'm here because this is where I come from. People really choose to be here. And when you make a choice, you make an investment. And you pay a price, but it feels worthy, it feels, feels meaningful. The resilience of Israelis to withstand, uh, to bounce back even stronger from these adversities, has also helped generate incredible innovation that is helping address some of the world's most challenging problems. You can find this phenomenon of turning adversity into advantage literally everywhere. I mean, take today for example, scorching hot, almost 100 degrees, the sun feels like it's, it's on top of you. But instead of running away from this adversity, from this heat, what do Israelis do? They take it, turn it around, use it to their advantage. Just look around you. You see solar heating panels everywhere. Over 90% of Israeli homes use solar heating. And this is not a new phenomenon that came with the Green Revolution. This has been around for a long time, since the 1950s. And Israel has another major problem. Much of the country is a desert. If you look at just about every Israeli home, school, park or farm, you'll notice something interesting. An innovative idea that makes the most of Israel's very limits can grow 40% more crops by using only half the regular amount of water. This has enabled Israelis to go from surviving in a desert to thriving as a leading exporter of fresh fruit and vegetables all around the world. And to think, it all started almost by accident. In the 1930s, an engineer named Simcha Blas noticed a row of trees where one of them was larger and greener than the rest. He saw a pipe with a small leak and realized these tiny drops of water were all that the tree needed to flourish. Shortly after, he teamed up with the farmers from Kibbutz Chatserim to develop the Netafim drip irrigation system, which would revolutionize the farming industry in Israel and around the world. I mean, when we felt that we had something good in our hand, it was clear that this is going to help farmers in Australia, in South Africa, in Ethiopia, in uh, India. It, it is something good for the world, not just for ourselves. 